Good morning, folks. These are plasma filaments dancing around the limbs. The bright region on the sun is where this morning at least one little sunspot is trying to grow. We've got all the news and another special video coming tonight, but we start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. And we find little more than the southern coronal hole system turning through. Those bright spots top left are certainly visible as well. These coronal holes may impact Earth with solar wind early next week, but right now, telemetry is dropping. Geospace plasma stream is calm and smooth, and geomagnetic conditions are all quiet as well. Using the Himawari satellite here to peek in on the Australian bushfires, the nightmare continues as Sydney fills with smoke again, and you can truly see the expanse of the multiple blazes ongoing now. Looking a bit ahead for the United States, same issue on the west coast we already looked at yesterday with the major rainfall sliding southward while a low in the gulf tightens and strengthens and moves towards Florida. By this time, the western track is in southern California, the eastern system chugs on, and another one approaches from the Pacific. Top quake of the last day struck Afghanistan at blot echo depths in the low velocity zone. While the blot echoes are nicely spread globally, I want to note that the Oceania signals are migrating up to that low velocity zone from the transition zone much deeper. Doesn't happen very often there. FYI, this is the blot echo wind map at QuakeWatch.net. Let's take a look at a poorly worded article that also sparks concerns of something from the past. First off, yes, we want to protect the environment, but starting off by saying humans have covered half the land on Earth is asinine. It's in the single digit percentages as we look at the night map of the world. Just know that in order to make anything visible here, the brightness of the individual light points must be enhanced. It's not even actually this bright at night. This planet has tons of room. but. Furthermore, on this article, when they begin to discuss zoning and human use in the name of protecting enormous swaths of land, I'm reminded of the Agenda 21 Wildlands Project, which thankfully got shot down in a bipartisan slaughter when it hit Congress, but the goal of the globalists was made clear. They renamed the project Agenda 2030 a little bit ago, and they truly believe that excluding most of us from most of our world is the way to the future. Imagine if the red and yellow were basically off-limits to you. Now, true enough, this Queensland study comes nowhere near to the extremes of the Wildlands Project, but please don't start having blue jays quack in a pond. We're listening for that. Anyway, let's get out of here. Let's go into deep space for a moment and deep back in time. We're finding the fourth impossibly early object class, ones that debunk the standard model of the universe. We have seen this with quasars, mega galaxies, and proto galaxy clusters forming too fast in the cosmos for the standard model to be correct. And now, the cores of some of those galaxies are spotted about a billion years earlier in cosmic time than they expected. They were already known to be forming so quickly that they are violating the Big Bang models, and so, now here we just push back those formations to an even earlier era. Now the last two articles relate to our special video coming tonight. First, an examination of the sun's current sheet and the particle surges seen with its interactions. This is critical for terrestrial space weather monitoring, but it is also a smaller version of the galactic trigger for our star. The sun's sheet inflicts electromagnetic disruptions to Earth's field every two weeks, so what happens when it's the galaxy and the sun? Probably the same energetic particle events we find here, plus the dust, electrons, ions, and galactic magnetic field reversal. And last but not least, it's a look at an extra lengthy magnetar burst brightening. While these stars are wild, their magnetism is set up like Earth's. While the Sun would likely super flare or micronova, either of those could inflict a magnetar type burst onto the Earth. The only difference is the extra energy in this circumstance wouldn't be coming from the Earth's ground, it would be coming from the Sun. And that's the topic of tonight's special video. I say tonight, but in reality it's coming this afternoon. Subscribe, click the notification bell, and make your way back here in a few hours for the mechanism that explains all the ancient accounts of cosmic lightning, how the solar flash interacts with our outer magnetic shield, and what may happen upon impact. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.